Hey everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick. I'm leaving a cigar shop. Uh, I'm about to make a quick stop to grab something to eat. And I just want to talk to you real quick. First and foremost, we are still in a fundraiser for the organization and Black Men Lead. Um, as in specific, but the organization as a whole, the link uh, and cash app, cash app account for the organization are in the description box. So show your love for the work we do. Uh, we are significantly underfunded, but we continue to do what we do. So whatever you decide to help with, we'll definitely help with that out of the way. Uh, the next thing is, don't forget to get book number 24 and book number 25. Book number 24 is Academic Apartheid, which deals with uh, the miseducation of our youth on a level, the alienation of our boys through special education disproportionality, and a bunch more. Um, book number 25 is The War on Black Wealth and Chasing the American Dream. Uh, that's releasing in about a week or so. So definitely order that. Um, and I go in all the way from uh, the Emancipation Reconstruction Black Codes all the way up to redlining and all of that stuff. But I then talk for about seven chapters on the things that we can do as individuals, no matter where you are and where you're at and what you're making to change your life and change the future for your family. You definitely want to check out this book. It is one of the most thorough that I've read or seen of anywhere. It's definitely some of my best work. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm excited about what the possibilities are for this book. But definitely, you want to get that. Now, with that out of the way, I want to just pose a question. Like I said, this isn't going to be that long. I want to pose a question. What if blacks for a change were prepared? What if we weren't so easily triggered because we knew how things work? What if in our preparation, we had protocols in place that told us what to do when something happened? What if we acted from a position of power instead of a position of desperation and weakness? What if we discovered who we really were? I know it's multiple questions, but it's not. It's all one question. What if we were prepared? You have often heard me say that one of the biggest problems that we face as blacks is that we don't understand how things work. And because we don't understand how things work, we are consistently in a position of being triggered, being handled, being manipulated, being controlled and pushed and, and never ever having our interest address uh, we are never in a position to actually act we, we don't act we react and there's a significant difference in that and so one of the things that I am going to focus on is really illuminating that's why I'm so excited about book number 25 is because any person who can read can pick this book up and go from a situation where they have no control over their financial future to step by step, literally weekly, taking control of their situation and in a short period of time being in a significantly better place and in a reasonable time being in a situation where they can execute significant control and at some point financial freedom. But we're going to have to develop an understanding of money the same way we're going to have to understand uh, the power of the media and how the media is used against us consistently. We're going to have to start to understand politics, um, geopolitics, military science, academic science, uh, definitely financial science and financial literacy. But what we are going to have to do is develop a system through which we can learn this, the system through which we can teach this, a system through which we can grow and develop as a people. And it's possible. P 
people are going to tell you it's not possible. People are going to tell you that we're too lost. I'm a firm believer that if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Uh, do we have a long, hard road to toe? Uh, yes. Uh, but the thing is, we're built for it. Our resilience over the last 155, 56 years has proven that we have the power to push. We've just been swinging at the air. We've been acting from a place of frustration and desperation instead of executing the power of knowledge. Uh, there's a bunch of knowledge uh, floating around. The problem is knowledge by itself is not power. One of the biggest misunderstandings there is is that knowledge is power. No, the, the effective and proper application of knowledge is power. Simply knowing doesn't do anything. And the problem is we've become uh, content with uh, intellectual masturbation, intellectual debates, and, and, and trying to prove who knows the most and who's the biggest scholar and all of these things that produce nothing. But that's what happens when you don't have power. You take the symbol, somebody saying that you are the foremost scholar puts no food on your table, provides no generation, generational wealth for your family, does nothing but stroke your ego and give you a false sense of intellectual superiority. I, I, I can give a damn less about being intellectually superior to anyone. What I do care about is my ability to feed myself, feed my family, and empower my people. I want to be an impact. I want to be a life changer. I want to be a person when I leave this place that my legacy speaks long after I'm gone. I want to be mentioned in the names of some of the greats, not because I'm, I'm trying to compete with them, but because if I do, that means I touch lives. That means I change lives. That means my life had purpose and meaning. It mattered. And that not only that, I passed that same passion on to my progeny. And that's something that we've got to look at right now. Even the, those, so many of us that have an understanding and are doing okay, are only worried about ourselves. And we don't understand the historical impact that it, it's, it's going to have down the line. When they look back, they're gonna see what we could have done, but didn't. They're gonna see a lot of posturing with no real community work and I'm, I'm I'm ashamed to say that and I don't want to be a part of the number of the people who sit up and find it justifiable and uh, appeasing to simply say I got it figured out I'm getting mine and then to lord it over everyone else because it feels good to be good at something or better than most at something uh, I find no pleasure and that I want everybody to win. I want people to learn that poverty isn't their lot in life, that suffering is their lot in life, that being is not their lot in life, that being at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder is not their lot in life, that being part of uh, a historically uh, abused and broken family doesn't have to be the story moving forward, that anybody can break the curse of trauma and abuse and dysfunction and toxicity in their families. I want to make sure that we have an understanding of what's possible with us. And that's what I fight for. That's come on, what, what I come up for. And that's another reason why I have merged what I do for a living with what I do in the community. And that's why you see the positive stuff. That's why you see the side of business that I have on here because that's what it's going to take. All the popping in for the lectures means nothing if there isn't a protocol and a blueprint in place to empower yourself. And what I'm trying to do is do that for as many people as I can before I leave this place. Uh, this past Saturday on the teachers, we had a young brother uh, that I've decided to take under my wings uh, that has a very powerful story and has a very powerful message and is 100% committed. And I, he's one of the brothers I wanna pass the torch to. I said this 20 years ago, I said that I have no desire to be in my 60s and 70s, still running around, still pushing, still playing the warrior role 
in my 70s. I said, by the time I turn 55, I want to pass the torch. I want to become the voice of reason, the voice of wisdom, the voice of uh, that uh, uh, of advice and direction for a younger, more stronger, more uh, energetic brothers to do it. But in order for that to happen, we have to empower them. That's why black men lead is so important. Um, we can we can talk about a bunch of different things, but let me tell you something. At the end of the day, it's going to be on us. It's going to be on us whether or not we win. And it is incumbent upon us now to take some time to look at how things can be done. For years, I have been talking about creating a national network through which we create a universal rite of passage. Why? Because that's how you socialize young black men, young black males into black manhood. So they understand what their roles are, where they have a clear understanding of what's going to be expected of them, where they have a sense and a passion to lead, a passion to protect, a passion to provide, a passion to raise the standard of living, not just for themselves, but for everyone around them. So they have an understanding of what it means to be uh, a business owner and all of these things that has to be a part of the desire men that we train and teach our young girls how beautiful they are before the world tells them they're not uh, and they're killing themselves trying to look a certain way because they think it validates them there's so much that I can talk about but at the end of the day this is what I want you to understand we are only going to get as high as our women can lift us and as far as our men can physically lead us and we're gonna to have to have a plan. We're gonna to have to have an agenda. We are operating with two, maybe three, national think tanks that work for solutions to our problems. The Odyssey Project, the Harvest Institute by Dr. Claude Anderson are the two that I can think of that have put in work and have. Man, there's literally a thousand pieces of relevant information just on advancing the black community on the Odyssey Project site. And I can guarantee you most people have not even taken a look at it. Um, I, with Dr. Anderson and the Harvest Institute, the person I went to when I was really building this out about 10 years ago was Dr. Anderson. Uh, his wife, Joanne, intercepted my attempt to get to him, so I dealt with her first. So I got a chance to deal with both of them and have them literally look at what I was doing and got their blessings and they co-signed it. Um, and then I moved on and I've worked with a bunch of other people. I have no problem. I have no ego that gets in the way of working with people. I'm not trying to, uh, grandstand anybody. I'm not trying to, uh, measure myself against anybody. The only person I've ever measured myself against is the better version of myself. And I want to push that, uh, philosophy on to other black men because if you challenge yourself to be the best version of yourself every day you wake up there's something for you to go after you're never content uh, I was asked some time ago and I've shared this with you guys before who was my hero and I've often said Malcolm X is my hero Malcolm X is probably the person uh, that I have the greatest affinity to you know uh, Naeem Agbar and Amos Wilson uh, are definitely uh, not that far behind. But when I really truly think about it, and I stopped and I thought when they asked me that question, and my answer was me. Not me now, but me five years from now. The person that's hands over heels better than the person that's sitting here now. The person five years from now has more knowledge, has more influence, has more impact, has stabilized themselves, is on a higher moral level, higher ethic, uh, um, higher level of ethics, um, a higher focus, more centered, more loving, more caring, more patient. That person is my hero. And the reason I choose that person is because I can become that person. I'll never be Malcolm. I'll never be Dr. Wilson. I'll never be Dr. Ogbar but I will be that version of me. If I live five years from now, I'll be that version of me that I'm looking at five years out and saying, I wanna be that person. I wanna be just like that person. And 
that is exactly what I want to do. So on that note, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get out of here, uh, grab me something to eat and, and, and get to the house, sit down and really get in my mind for a while. But I had to drop that on you. I hope that it blesses people. And I hope that you really take this seriously. Again, uh, I would love for you to show some support to um, the work we're doing. Again, the link and the Cash App account for the organization is in the description box. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable evening. Take care.